Most of the Indian investments in Africa is going into areas like manufacturing and non-financial services like information technology, IT-enabled services and energy. Among the top destinations for investment in Africa, Sudan and Mauritius attract around 18% each of Indian investment flow. Infrastructure remains a giant area of focus as does agriculture. In fact, one of the world's largest rose growers is an Indian based in Ethiopia. K. Surya Rao, once a one-acre farmer in Andhra Pradesh, now owns 75 hectares of land in Ethiopia, producing 115 million stems of roses in one year. As I come to the end of this interview, I have two more questions. One is uh, deep concerns about Indian safety in Af Afghanistan, especially with the recent attacks. What kind of concerns and how can these concerns be redressed at a governmental level? Look, we uh, obviously uh, are, are shattered by the loss of uh, lives, We're emotionally shattered is what I mean by the loss of lives. We lost uh, nine Indians again, uh, many of whom were real heroes. There was a uh, uh, there were people from the medical mission who have saved lives day after day and who now gave their own lives. There was the deputy general manager of the extraordinary engineering effort that constructed power ca transmission cables at 3,000 meters height to bring electricity to Kabul. For such people who have done so much to make life in Afghanistan better for Afghans, for them to be killed has been a particularly cruel blow. But, Minister, but at the same time, what we are doing is providing the necessary security precautions. We have, for our projects, we have protection uh, through, for example, our paramilitary forces, uh, IT, uh, the Indo-Tibetan Border Police has been deployed there in the past, and other agencies. And as far as we're concerned, we will, following the visit of the National Security Advisor, take certain measures to strengthen that security. But the role we are playing is not a military role. The role we're playing is a developmental role with adequate security protection. And that's the point, Minister. People want to know while India continues to pump in so much aid money into Afghanistan, at the moment, is India being cut out of the future conversations or conversations about the future uh, of Afghanistan that is being led by Pakistan? No, oh, we were present at the London conference. We have good bilateral conversations with the key players in Afghanistan. Many of them do consult us on issues and keep us informed of their thinking. So I'm not at all concerned of quote unquote India being left out. But the important thing to understand is that as of now, we have defined our role in a specific way. It is a humanitarian and developmental role, and that's what we're focused on at this time. My last question, uh, about Pakistan, there's news that there might be one more uh, foreign secretary level talks. At a broad, generic sort of way, you know, these talks come and go and we continuously have talks, but for the larger scope of people in India, where do we stand at the moment in Pakistan? Because it seems to be, 2611 seems to be a chapter that hasn't been closed. In many senses, people think justice hasn't been delivered to India, and some people believe the government is in, unable to move on it. No, look, we have obviously got two outstanding issues with Pakistan. One is to bring the perpetrators of 2611 to justice not the 19 people who have found the justice of the Lord, but the ones who have been arrested and are being tried in Pakistan and the ones who are absconding and who need to be found by the Pakistani authorities. And then the second element is to dismantle the infrastructure of terror from which these attacks have repeatedly been launched on us for the last 15, 20 years. There we're talking about closing down training camps, shutting down the organizations that recruit, that fund, that train, that guide uh, the, the terrorists who come to us. We are not at all prepared to say that either of those has been done to our satisfaction yet. But we are plugging away at it. And talking to Pakistan is one more way of ensuring that the message gets through. You see, not talking is an option we have exercised. Talking is an option that we are trying to explore. But we are very clear in our mind as to where the talking must lead. We want to see concrete, visible, demonstrable action for our own people. And we haven't yet. We have not seen enough of it. I mean, we don't want to minimize the fact that indeed some people are behind bars in Pakistan and are being tried. We'd like to see progress. We'd like to see convictions. We'd like to see evidence being brought out. And at the same time, we'd like to see the missing numbers of people who are not behind bars arrested and brought behind bars as well. Minister, thanks very much indeed for your time and being on the show again. Thank you, Hindu. Thank you very much.